Welcome to yet another Doodly Pro tutorial. This time we're going to be doing some wireframe rendering. But not just any plain old wireframe rendering. I'm going to go over a few different ways how to make your renders look a little more interesting. So you can show off your 3D model's topology without it looking boring, but yet still simple enough so that you don't lose any of the detail when you're looking at your polygons. This is especially important for those who are trying to get into the video game industry. Those guys really want to see your wireframe renders. That way you can show them that your poly count is low enough to be able to render fast enough in their 3D gaming engines. So let's bust out 3D Studio Max and start rendering some wireframes. So here we are in 3DS Max, and I'm going to start by making myself a seamless backdrop. So let's maximize our viewport and create a plane. So there we go. It doesn't look much like an airplane, but hey, you do what you can. Looks good. I'm going to show the edge faces. Now what I want to do is go over the Modify tab and stretch this out a little bit lengthwise and add some more length segments. And 24 looks good. The reason I'm doing that is because now I'm going to go to the modifier list and select bend. We want it to bend on the Y axis and direction 90 degrees. There. You can just type it in here too if you want. That would probably be the smart thing to do, but if you want to know the smart thing to do, <laughs> You came to the wrong place. So I'm going to enable my limit effect, change the upper limit to, who knows, until it looks good. That looks good. All right, now I'm just going to stretch this out a bit, make it kind of wider, longer, and taller. So there's our seamless backdrop. Now we just need an object to render. So let's go back to our Create tab and drop down Standard Primitives and go to Extended Primitives. And let's see what we got here. I want a Taurus Knot. Of course. What else? Would we use a teapot? I don't think so. All right, zoom in up here. Let's see what we got. Wow, we! If that's not just the most uninteresting thing I've ever seen. So we have our object and our background. Let's get some wireframing going on here. So this wireframe technique is the first way I learned how to do it. It's not exactly the most practical, but just for fun, let's take a look. So I'm going to go up and open my material editor. So let's apply it to the background and the torus knot. Then we'll go over to our next material slot. And all we need to do for this is check wire. And as you can see, the little sphere will just show a wire mesh now. And I'm going to turn the diffuse for this one to black. Now I want to make sure our torus knot is selected. Go to Edit and select Clone, which is also Control-V on the keyboard. Make sure it's on Copy, not Instance. We'll just name this torus knot wire. Press OK. Now we have two torus knots. But for the one we just created, we're going to go to our Modify tab, drop down the Modifier list, and find Push. There it is. And we're going to give it a push value of 0.1. Now, if we bring a Material Editor back up, we can apply the wireframe material to the outside torus knot. Go ahead and hit Render. And there it is, our very own wireframe render. Now, this is still looking kind of boring, so if you want to doctor this up a bit, you can go into your Lights and create a skylight, turn cast shadows on, let's render this again. So with those soft shadows, it doesn't actually make this render look half bad. But some of the minor inconveniences with this technique is, we now have two of the same objects in this scene, which doubles our poly count first of all, which will certainly lead to longer render times. But also, if I'm going to move this torus knot in my scene, I have to make sure I'm selecting both of them, which is hard to do. I mean, you could group them. You could go up here and group them together, but then if you want to change something in one and not the other, you have to ungroup and so on and so forth. Plus, if I wanted to change the base color to this object so it's not gray and maybe white, it's automatically going to want to apply it to the top layer, which is the wireframe object. So I have to go and click until I select Taurus Knot 1, and I can go in here and assign the selection. Now it's white. So now that you've seen this method, let's take a look at a more streamlined version. First off, let's delete our wireframe object on top, and one very important detail of this next technique is to make sure you switch your render settings. I'm just in my render setup here. Make sure I'm on the common tab and scroll down to the very bottom where it says assign renderer. And here, we'll change the default scanline render to mental ray. So now that we've got mental ray selected, let's set up our new material. All right, so let's select our wireframe material. 
go to where it says standard and select composite. Okay. And we can discard the old material. So here we go. For the mat one, we want to select standard. And we can keep everything the same for now. We'll just rename this from material 27 to base. Then go back up to the parent. Go to our second slot. And select standard as well. Press OK. We're going to change this diffuse to black. Turn wire on and rename it to be wire. Now if we look at this material, you can see both the base color and the wireframe are all together in one material, which makes it way more convenient. So now we can drop this material on this single torus knot and when we render, you've already got your wireframe. Also, if you want to make the wireframe look a little thicker, make sure you're in the wire material and go down to extended parameters. And where it says wire size, we can go, I don't know, see what three looks like. I'm not sure why you'd ever want the wireframes to be that thick, but just in case you do, there it is. So let's change this back. Let's just do 1.5. 1.52, fine. So that was much easier to do. But let's take it a step further. How can we really make this render look nice? All right, first off, we don't need this skylight in here anymore. Let's get rid of that little guy. But now we don't have any sort of nice shadows. So what we're gonna do to take the place of that is go back to our parent, select the base material. And for the diffuse channel, we're gonna add some ambient occlusion. So let's select that and press OK. Then we're also gonna do the same thing for our background. So we'll drop that white material back on here and go to the fuse slot, ambient occlusion, press OK. Now when we render, you get these nicer, a little more realistic shadows on both the ground and in the model itself. And one thing you probably notice right away is how grainy this render looks. Well, that's just because the ambient occlusion samples are turned down really low. I usually do my test renders at 16, but then when I'm ready for my final render, I'll bump it up to 256 or more. So I change the background to 256. Let's go to the samples for our material. Change these to 256 as well. Now if we render, it's gonna take a little longer, but the shadows are gonna be much cleaner. And just so you know, if you wanted to, you can also render ambient occlusion in a separate pass, so you can composite it together later, but we'll save that for another time. So this doesn't look too bad for a wireframe object. So for my final act, we're gonna throw some lights in this scene, see if we can get a more stylized looking render like I showed you earlier. So make sure you're under the standard light setting, under the Create tab. We're gonna go ahead and select an MR Area Omni. I like to call him Mr. Omni, that Mr. being MR, meaning mental ray, which is what we're using. We're gonna use these lights for style, so we don't really need the shadows on. We'll let the ambient occlusion take care of that for us. Zoom out here and place our light. Move it up a bit, kind of more in front of our object. This will be our key light. Go to the Modify tab for our little light buddy. Under Intensity slash Color slash Attenuation, we wanna change the Decay type to Inverse Square. All that means is it mimics realistic light fall off. And you can actually see the fall off displayed in your view, represented by this green sphere looking thing that goes around your light. So we're gonna boost that up a little bit. We're also gonna hold down shift on the keyboard and click and drag to make a duplicate. And that copy will be our backlight or hair light, whatever you wanna call it. Let's go for a more of a harshly backlit look. Let me change this to one point. Five. Hopefully it's not too bright. Also, I want to change the color to more of a bluish and our foreground color to be more of a warmer tone. We'll go for the good old blockbuster look. Let's zoom into our object and take a render. So that actually doesn't look too bad. Maybe a few minor tweaks and we'll be having a party. So here's my final render. All I did was slightly move the lights around and turn up the intensity of the backlight. If you want to check out some other awesome 3D tutorials, you can head on over to the Doodly Pro YouTube page at youtube.com slash doodlypro. That's 1-800-54, okay. Once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon, but until then,